Hi, I'm Tony Gardea, Principal of Galena Park High School. I want to talk today about the partnership between Galena Park High School and the NASA Hunch Program. This program has afforded our students at Galena Park High School the opportunity to meet and in interact with NASA engineers, administrators, and even the opportunity to meet Mr. Bob Thursk, a NASA astronaut. Hi, my name is Bob Thirsk. I'm an astronaut from the Canadian Space Agency working at uh, the NASA Johnson Space Centre in Houston. I've had the opportunity to fly twice in space, once uh, aboard the Space Shuttle Columbia on a 17-day mission, and more recently on a six-month expedition aboard the International Space Station. The uh, station is complete now, and it's got uh, some wonderful laboratories up there for investigating how the human body adapts to the weightless environment. How long does it take to get used to the environment on the ISS? You know, every single organ system in the body probably adapts to space at a, at a different rate. So for example, the vestibular system, which is a balanced system in the, in the middle ear, uh, in the inner ear, it uh, adapts in a couple of days. So we're not feeling too well uh, motion sickness wise for the first couple of days, and then we're bulletproof. The heart and uh, blood vessels probably take another few days after that. And then uh, muscles and bones, unfortunately, they keep adapting and adapting. They keep losing muscle mass, keep losing bone calcium. You know, something was really interesting. The day that I arrived aboard the space station, it took two days to launch, rendezvous, and dock with the space station from our Soyuz uh, vehicle. When we docked, the hatch opened, entered inside the space station, and it looked like I'd enter into a Salvador Dali painting. It was just seemed surreal. And uh, it looked somewhat similar to the simulators that we have at the Johnson Space Center in Houston, but it also looked different too. I saw cables all over the place. There's computers all over the, all over the place. My friends were floating all over the place and there was stowage all over the place. And I felt a little bit lost for the first week or so. And then I gradually figured out what was going on and why things were the, the way they, they were. So I guess to answer your question, physiologically it takes a few days to adapt to space, but psychologically it takes a few days as well. True to say that every single organ system in the body adapts somehow to weightlessness. So muscles, bones, the heart uh, adapt to weightlessness. Anyways, the, uh, the Neurospat uh, team uh, had a hypothesis that astronauts' uh, ability to detect uh, orientations in space, vertical, oblique, uh, horizontal, will be affected. And primarily they felt that uh, our ability to detect vertical and horizontal, which is quite easy uh, on Earth, would be no different than the more difficult uh, task of determining orient changes in uh, oblique orientation. The other thing that they were wondering was whether or not our uh, visual motor skills and our visual thinking skills as like in video games would be compromised in space uh, as well. So their objective over the next uh, few years is to get uh, five astronauts to participate in their experiment. And basically their experiment is uh, a video game. It uh, involves the astronauts looking at a computer display through a, a tunnel mechanism so that we can't see any of the, um, the outside uh, uh, periphery and only focus on the, um, the, the vid video that's being presented to us. And they present a number of uh, oblique lines to us. They'll present a, a, a line to me for one second, then it disappears. And then a second line comes up, and it may be the same position or it may be slightly off. And my job is simply to answer whether or not yes or no the, the line that was presented to me is the same or it's a little bit different. Does your Neurospat test results improve over time? Yes, there's a little bit of a, a learning trend there. Again, Neurospat, from the astronaut perspective, or subjects, is like a video game. So just like any video game at home, it takes a few times or a few days to become expert at it. The important thing is that the Neurospat scientist asked us to repeat the session several times before launch in order, number one, to get familiar with the protocol, but also to sort of plateau out in our, our ability. So our scores kept improving, improving, improving mm -hmm. prior to flight. And when they saw that our scores were about the same one session after another, they knew that there was no more learning effect, that any changes from that point on would be, going to be because of cognitive changes. So 
Yeah, there is a learning effect, uh, just like any uh, video game, but the scientists took account of that. My perception, my own personal experience, is that um, on days when I was feeling well, my performance on orbit should have been pretty close to what it was uh, on the ground pre-flight. But there are days aboard the space station when I was fatigued, I didn't get enough sleep, or I was anxious about some other experiment or some other activity I had to do later in the day when my performance might have uh, been degraded. But uh, who knows, we'll have to wait and see. It's uh, hard for me to say whether or not weightlessness uh, itself has an effect on, on uh, the brain function or whether there could be other stressors that, that uh, affect astronauts' abilities in space. So that's a summary of what NeuroSpat is all about, a pretty cool experiment.